writing solos like how, how how many notes do you have in you you know for <laughs> you have so many albums you have so many solos uh, like how yeah. where does it all come from that's a good question <laughs> well the you know a good example is you know i we talked about terminal velocity i did my solo record yeah. and then a few months later probably not even a few months a couple months later did liquid tension experiment three right and then that fall went in and started the new dream yes. theater record and there's tons of solos all over that yes. stuff of, of differing and I, I never had that feeling like what am i going to do or panic or okay. like, how am i going to it's just like i put myself in the environment mm -hmm. you know in the studio and and i have the backing track going and the solo section going kind of turn lights like this off mm -hmm. so you get all vibey <laughs> yep. Have some coffee, mm -hmm. and I just sit there and I play over the, you know, I go back to kind of just improvising and mm -hmm. and trying to to extract what what I'm hearing in here, mm -hmm. and and sometimes that process is really quick, sometimes it's it's longer, but I find that you get into this sort of like this mode where like the creative doors mm -hmm. open, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you're like. Oh wait, that was really cool. Mm -hmm. Like you start to kind of stumble upon. Do you stuff. record yourself from um, this? Yeah. So it's just constantly recording yeah. until you find something you can like. Yeah. Kind of I mean, sometimes yes, or when I feel like I'm like in the zone, we'll start recording. Sometimes I'm just kind of going for it. Mm -hmm. And and what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to internalize. You know, it. There's something I'll, I'll say this. There's something about recording a record, having all your solos, whatever, and then putting it out. It all happens within a very sort of short period of time, even if it's several months. Yeah. It's not like you've had the opportunity to improvise over the solo section live right. for a year no. with your band. Because, right. you know, I did a solo tour and I, I was doing so much playing on the solo tour that the solo started to develop and change. Yeah, okay. But you don't have that opportunity when you're recording a record. You just, so I try to emulate that as much as I can by just sitting there playing over it, playing over it, playing over it. Um, and then things start to, to come out. I mean, I guess it's sort of, just like with anything, since mm -hmm. you have this steady workflow with Dreamfitter, that right. it's, it's just a process you've done so many times that yeah. you're basically you're an expert of just sitting and pushing out yeah. solos. Because, it, I mean, yeah. you're doing it so often. I mean, right. it's like you get a studio musician to come in and play right. that's been in the studio forever. I mean, he's going to know what it, he's exactly. going to deliver. It's, yeah, it's not like it's overwhelming. Like, oh, my God, I have no. to do a solo. It's like, this is what I do. But yeah. And the cool, the fun thing about it, like you said, there's, you think about the catalog and all the different projects and stuff. You're right. Like, how many solos could, could you do? You think about other players and stuff like that. But the thing that always surprises me is, something new will come out of it mm -hmm. and you have this kind of weird thing and you're like wow how did i never think of that before mm -hmm. you know or just something magically works out yeah. on the guitar that's like oh my god this chord progression allows me to play every open string on the guitar right. somehow that mm -hmm. magically worked out so i'm going to come up with something that uses all open strings mm -hmm. and then your brain starts working and and then you end up some, with something that you've never done before. And it, yeah. That's really cool. You know, 